Welcome back to the Moxie Short Sew Along. I'm Sarah and I'm excited that you're joining me again today. Um, today we're going to be um, creating and applying our bias binding. So when you're done today, um, you should have a pair of shorts um, that look like this. So the front, the hem is all finished with the bias and the back, it's all finished as well. Um, and it's been tacked down. Um, so we're ready to get started on that today. You should have a long piece right now um, that looks like this. So it should be sewn in kind of one long strip from yesterday's work. So right now I'm going to show you how to cut and apply that bias binding. Um, and then I'm also today, if you're planning on sewing um, the inner um, briefs or the um, optional compression short add-on, I'm gonna show you how to sew that today as well. Um, so if you're not sewing either of those, you can just skip over um, the second video today, but um, everyone is going to need to do the bias binding and um, finish the and do the applying it today and, and kind of putting the shorts together um, now one option um, if you don't if you're using like a french terry um, you don't have to necessarily do the bias binding i highly recommend mastering this skill because i think it's a really good skill to learn and it just makes for a really nice finish on the shorts but if you're using like a french terry or something um, you could even um, you know put your shorts together and use like a reverse cover stitch um, along the upper back um, to attach them. You're going to want to make sure, um, especially if you do that, that you have some um, wash away wonder tape handy. I find that handy no matter what. So if you don't have someone for some for today, go ahead and go out and, and grab some because you'll be glad that you did when you're um, positioning the shorts and putting them together. Um, so if you're ready, we're just going to go ahead and, and get started. Um, make sure that you're leaving um, comments and encouraging each other along the way. Um, I know this is probably a, a new skill for a lot of you. Um, so post your progress photos. Please post questions. Um, I'm definitely here to help you. So I look forward to seeing our progress today. And let's go ahead and get started. So to start, what I have um, is I've assembled got some strips here. I've assembled my moxie shorts um, by sewing the front to the upper and lower back. So I have this one huge long piece. And what it's ready for is the binding. And um, the bias tape binding tends to be kind of the most challenging part about how to cut it, how to sew it together. It's really not that hard once you get some practice with it, um, but I just thought I'd do a quick little part here on how to show you how to do that. So I have my fabric here. I actually have some pre-cut strips, um, but I'm gonna show you how I cut my bias tape. Now you can buy bias tape in the store, um, but it tends to be really stiff. Um, it's not very forgiving. And it's really better to, to have your bias tape, especially with this pair of shorts, match the fabric that you're using it to. So a lot of people, you know, want to use fold over elastic. That's fine. I've used fold over elastic on a couple pairs, but that's really most appropriate to sw heavier swim fabrics, um, to something like scuba. It's not going to work on a lightweight woven or a lighter weight fabric. And this is a stretch woven from the fabric fairy that I'm using. And so I'm going to be making my own bias tape here. Um, I have a couple of things that I want to show you. Um, this is it's called Easy Quilting Bias Ruler. And I love this thing. This makes cutting my own bias tape really easy. Um, you don't have to have it. I'll show you how I use it. And then I'll show you the method that's um, in the instructions as well. So if you're getting ready to cut your bias strips with this ruler, it has this kind of angled edge here. I'm going to put that along the selvage of my fabric. Let me zoom in here on the selvage. So the selvage edge is that edge that kind of has usually some markings from the manufacturer. It's the edge that's not going to fray. Um, I place it along that selvage edge, and the way that that angle is, it's going to automatically be put on the bias. So for this pattern, um, you're going to need your two inch strips of bias fabric. So I would just go ahead and line it up so that I'm at two inches. This is a two and a half inch ruler, so I'm gonna have a half inch overlay. 
uh, overhang there and cut right along there to make a long bias strip. And I would cut as many of those as you need. And it says in the instructions how many inches of bias tape that you need for your size. Um, so that's what I would do to create my bias tape. Now, if you don't have a bias ruler, it's pretty easy. You can still do this fairly easily. You're gonna take one corner of your fabric and fold it down to meet the selvage. And that's gonna create that line that's on the bias. And so you would just take a regular ruler at that point and cut, if you're cutting on the fold, you wanna start with one inch so you end up with a two inch strip and then cut two inch strips. So that's gonna be how you cut your bias strips. And I've already done that here. And once you cut them, you're gonna to need to sew them together. And this can be a little counterintuitive. So most things, can we zoom in here? Most things we would line up perfectly. We'd wanna do this, but that's not the right way. What we want to do, and I always kinda of have to play with this a little bit myself, is flip it so that it's at a right angle and sew along here. And if you, have, if you do that correctly, um, you're not going to sew right along the edge. You're going to have a quarter inch seam allowance. Then when you fold it down, you fold it down, they should be lined up really well. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do that right now. And then I'll come back. Um, let's zoom in on this one more time. So when you take those bias strips you, and you sew them together, you should have a little overhang, little triangles that are overhanging at each end. This is going to be allow you so that when you sew your quarter inch seam allowance that that lines up perfectly along the top and bottom edges. If you don't have that overhang, it's not going to be perfectly lined up. So I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew those together and then I'm going to show you how I make my bias tape. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew my bias strips together. I've got those little triangle overhangs that we need, um, and I'm gonna sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I just use a straight stitch here. I don't even pin because it's such a small area. my bias strip together and you can see that because of that quarter inch seam allowance um, and the little triangle overhangs now we have the strips perfectly lined up so I'm going to go over to my iron and I'm just going to iron that seam open you always want to use your sewing machine for serging your or sewing your bias strips together you don't want to serge it um, because that's going to create extra bulk so I've just pressed that open and then I usually trim that off a little bit. So I trim off those little edges. You don't need them anymore. And then if you were making you know, the full shorts, you would continue piecing strips together. Um, I'm gonna do one more strip just to show you one more time how that works. So now you really wanna make sure that you're, you know, you've got a right side and a wrong side. Um, so you don't wanna line them up like this. You want to make sure they're opposite. So I've got those little triangle overhangs on either side. So when I sew, it's going to be even. I'm going to come over here to my sewing machine. And I'm going to get them lined up. What I'm aiming for is this corner right here. That's what you want to aim for when you're sewing. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing again. Come over here to my ironing board. I'm gonna get in there, press it open. I love this fabric, very stretch woven. It's so nice to work with. Oops. 
going to trim off the corners there. Okay, so now I have one big long strip. I need 64 inches for my size. I happen to be about 60 inches tall, so it looks like it's good for me. Um, that's how I tell. So now I have another tool that I'm going to use. Um, this is a little clover bias tape maker. Um, and to use this, you could do this by hand. You could fold this in half and then iron it and then fold it in half to meet the line and iron it again and iron it again. Um, that's totally fine. It ends up kind of scorching your fingers a little bit, but it's workable. But for this little tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the corner of my bias tape, and my bias tape is wrong side up, and I'm going to slide it in here. And it helps if you have some tweezers, or I'm going to use my scissors to kind of get it started through there. So I just get it started until I can see it coming out the end, and you can see how this little gadget folds it for you. So I get it started. I'm actually going to need to switch. I'm going to need to come around to this side because of the way that I'm going to need to fold this. So then I grab my iron and I start ironing my long strip. And this is going to create this that fold. And sometimes it struggles a little bit if you don't have it lined up really well here. So sometimes it needs a little extra encouragement. This is really going to be a lot more efficient than doing it the other way. So I'm going to keep on doing this. Just keep on pulling and pressing, pulling and pressing. And when you get to one of those seams, it might struggle a little bit. But if you press them open, it shouldn't do too badly. So I'm gonna just make sure there's a seam. Just make sure that it's still ironing my folds evenly here. And there, I just went right over the seam with no trouble. So once you get to the end, you're gonna go back and you're gonna fold that in half again. And you're gonna iron that. And that's your bias tape. You just made your own bias tape. This is actually really fun to do and it makes the finish on a lot of different types of clothes really nice. So I'm going to take a minute to finish that and then I'll show you how to attach the bias tape onto the moxie shorts. Okay, so now I have my long uh, strip of bias tape that I've pressed and I have the shorts um, wrong side up so they're in that big long piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the right side of my bias tape with the wrong side of the shorts. This seems really weird at first, but this is how I really like to stitch my bias tape. And I'm going to stitch along that first fold that I made. So it's like this, and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to stitch along this first fold. And I'm going to do that all the way down. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and start to do that. And you can watch how I do it. Thing is a big long, big long piece. So I'm gonna line it up here. I usually like to have a little bit of overhang. I find that makes it easier later. There are different ways to apply bias tape. This is just what I'm comfortable with, what I find works for me. But you can use whatever works for you too. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that my needle is gonna line up with that fold. No, I'm not, what I'm not doing is I'm not stretching this. Yes, it is stretchy, but I'm not going to stretch it as I apply it. If you were doing fold over elastic, you would do this differently. You would put a little tension on it, but I am doing this with the stretch woven bias tape, so I'm not going to be putting any tension on this. I'm just lining it up. I 
always want to put the pedal to the metal here, but it's important to go slow enough that you can make sure that you're still lined up. When you do this, you want to make sure that your seams are getting pressed the right direction. And I press this seam toward the back. This is the front of the shorts up here. I'm going toward the back. So I want to make sure that that seam is getting pressed the right direction when I sew over it. It'll make for a nicer finish later. There are some spots where there's kind of a, a sharper curve. It's not really sharp, but you just want to make sure that your bias tape is stretching to accommodate that. You're not stretching it, but that you're kind of manipulating it to accommodate that curve. And that's where the homemade bias tape is really su superior to the store-bought bias tape because it can kind of mold better to those curves. You can see my seam is still pressed open. That's important. Okay, so this is a really big long piece. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and then I'll come back to you and show you how I fold it over to the other side. Okay, so now I am done sewing my bias tape to the shorts for that first pass. Um, I've gone ahead, so what we did was we did the right side of the bias tape to the wrong side of the shorts. So I just sewed it along that first fold. And now sometimes what I do is I do go ahead and trim a little bit along here um, just to make it easier to fold. If you didn't sew exactly on that line and you're a little bit you know, too close, it, it won't fold quite as nicely. So then I flip the shorts over to the right side. So now the right side of the shorts is facing up. And I take my bias tape and I just flip it over and pin it. What you want to do is make sure that that line of stitching is going to be covered so we've got this, our stitching line here. It's going to be covered when we sew the bias tape down onto the wrong side of, or right side of the shorts. So just make sure that your stitching line is going to be covered by your bias tape. You just go ahead, I pin every couple of inches. And you're just gonna go ahead. Now what I'm gonna do is now that I've got that all pinned, I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew at an eighth of an inch right along that fold. Okay, that's closest to the body of the shorts. So I'm going to go ahead and head over there and do that now. It is important to try to get as close to the edge as you can. Um, because you don't want them to be flipping up. If you only sewed, you know, right here, then it would be able to flip up and, and that stitching would be visible. So um, if I line up, you know, this inside edge of my presser foot with the edge of my bias tape, that gets me pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start stitching that. You just want to go slowly and be precise. If you have a cover stitch, you could do this with a cover stitch machine too. I do this at a three millimeter stitch length, um, so not your typical two and a half that you might use for a seam. So that gives them a little tiny bit of extra give. If it's easier for you, you could even use something like wash away wonder tape to hold it down if you didn't want to pin or clip. 
On this, it's not, it's not a real slippery fabric. It's not like swim or something like that where, you know, you would have to keep it from sliding around. So I feel like the clips do just fine. And you can see, it's right along that edge there, what I've sewn. And if we flip it over to the wrong side, you can see gotten right along that edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all the way down the shorts. Now if you miss a little bit on the wrong side, it's okay. Um, they are attached, you know, you sewed them there, so it should be all right. But you can always unpick and go back if you need to. Now this is that edge, the curve, that tends to get a little bit ripply. And so I just like to make sure, just kind of double check that it's tucked in there well. I feel like it's actually easier to manage in a stretch woven than it is in a knit. And I've made these in swim knit, I've made them in stretch woven, I've made them in um, a scuba fabric, and they work well with all of those fabrics. It's mainly just a matter of, you know, what size are you going to use, you should really size down if you're using a knit or something like swim, um, and matching your bias tape to your fabric. I'm going to try to use a similar weight to the type of fabric that you're using. So you would not want to use something like fold over elastic on this stretch woven. Stretch woven is very lightweight, fold over elastic, especially the one inch kind tends to be a little heftier. So it's just important to have a good match between your fabric and your bias tape. I'm getting toward the end here. good thing about pressing your bias tape so well is that it just really makes that fold easy. I'm not really having to put any effort into folding this down or holding it down. That's where wovens are so nice. They really press well. I made it all the way to the end. Okay, so the next part.
part of these shorts is where some people get confused. And I'll admit, I sewed them together wrong twice <laughs> myself uh, before I figured it out. So, what you're going to do is you're going to fold them in half. Um, with the right sides together so that that U shape that ends up being the crotch seam is together and you're going to sew along there or serge along there. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and serge because it's quick and it's easy but you could easily just sew it. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to attach the upper and the lower back because that's the part that tripped me up the first few times. Um, so I'll try to I'll try to make that clear for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and serge that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've serged that long U seam, and then I've also opened it up. And if you have something that looks like a whale tail, you've done it right. I've serged along that seam that looks like the whale tail. So what I'm gonna do. Is I'm going to show you how to attach the upper and the lower back. The first time I did this, I attached them both to the waistband. Um, if you do that, you will notice that they are really, really short in the back. <laughs> uh, scandalously short. So what I learned is what you're actually supposed to do is just attach the upper and lower back at the bias seam. So you do not want to attach them up here at the top. This is what you do not want to do. What you want to do is attach the serge portion to the bias tape. So you're just going to overlap them. So if you look from the wrong side, it's going to look like that, where you have them just, you're just overlapping right there. And then you're going to sew right on top of where you sewed for the bias tape to attach them. I find Wash Away Wonder Day tape, my sewing BFF, to be really helpful in keeping this positioned well. Um, so what I tend to do is you're going to want to make sure that you know where the center back is. Um, so you're going to want to make sure to mark that. You can make a little clip. It's on the pattern too. For some reason I didn't have it marked on here. Um, and then I take my Wash Away Wonder tape and I put it along the lower back, which is that whale tail, all the way along that serged edge. And then take the paper away. attach. So I start in the middle. I like to start in the middle. And I just overlap that a little bit. And I keep going until I get to the side seams. Now this is where you're going to want to try on your moxie shorts. And this is another place that Wash Away Wonder Shape is pretty awesome. Um, because it essentially base that in place for you. So you're going to want to try them on and see how the legs fit you at this point. Um, if they feel like they're too loose, you can overlap these side seams a little bit more. Um, so that's going to be something that you're going to want to do before you permanently sew them together if it's your first pair. But if it's not, and you're confident about how they fit, you're going to go ahead and just overlap that all the way down. Sometimes I like to go from the inside as well, just to make sure that I'm overlapping them consistently. And that wash away wonder tape just lets you kind of pull them back and then reposition them. So just make sure too that you don't want any folds. You might have to ease it in very, very slightly. Um, these shorts are actually an older version of the pattern that I had cut out that I thought would be useful for this video. Um, you might have to do a tiny bit of easing in, but when you got them done, they're just going to look like that along the back. So at the top, 
you only have one layer. And that's where the waistband is going to go. Okay? At the bottom, you have the upper, upper back, and the lower back attached right along here. So at the top, there's only one layer where the waistband's going to attach. You don't want any more than one layer up here. The bottom, you have the lower back, attach the upper back right along that bias tape. You're just going to go ahead and sew along here. On the inside, it's going to look like this. Okay? So I hope that clears it up. I hope that gives you some more confidence. If you haven't made the moxie shorts yet, you totally should. Um, and if you've made them but you're not sure if you've done them right, um, I hope that that's helpful for you. Um, that it's also just giving you some information about how to attach bias tape. This is something that appears on a lot of different patterns and once you know how to do it, um, gives you a lot of freedom. The top I'm wearing right now um, has bias tape all around the armholes, all around the neck, um, and you know, made it out of the same fabric as the shirt, obviously. So um, it's a great touch that you can add to a lot of different garments. So um, you can check out the other tutorials on my blog by going to the top, going to Sewing Tutorials. I have a lot of different videos and, and tutorials and live sew-alongs on there as well. So thank you for watching. Um, my website is www.sewingwithsarah.com um, and feel free to, to ask any questions in the comments. Thank you.